Hey, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching. It would mean the world to us if you could just scroll down, like, hit the subscribe button for the Snaps YouTube channel. It goes a long way towards helping us out. Now, let's dive into some college football. Big news that I, I gave a lot of people some, some confidence heading into next year, Carson Beck back. Mm -hmm. What did you like? What did you not like from where you where you're one? And where do you kind of anticipate him making that next stride? Like, where, where where's the biggest gap as you break down the film each and every week? Where's the biggest gap that you believe he needs to improve on to take his game to another level, to be a true Heisman contender, to be that potential number one pick in the NFL draft, to lead Georgia to a national championship? What are those, those areas of improvement? Yeah, in terms of comfort and continuity, I don't know if Carson Beck will ever have this type of stability, like even the rest of his career. He's going to spend five years, right? Todd Munkin came into this uh, program in 2020. He's going to spend 2020, 21, 22, 23, and 24 in the same system from a terminology mm -hmm. standpoint, from a how we operate standpoint. I don't think he'll ever get that. Like history of football tells us you're not even going to get that in the NFL ranks, no matter even where. Like Andy Reid's changed coordinators three times in the last four seasons. This just doesn't happen. So from a continuity and a comfort standpoint. But it's the same is, offense, though. It's, it's correct. Andy Reid's offense. It, 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 it's Andy Reid's offense. It's but Andy again, that, that's the that's the example. That, the rest yeah, that's of, the exception. I'm with you. That, the that rest, of, the rest of the league is just not, not there. Yeah. So like – you're not going to have a, a a growth from a comfort standpoint. He's not going to suddenly know the offense better than he ever has. Like, it's mm -hmm. not going to see any growth there. The growth for me, and, and I think the growth for Carson is going to have to be from a confidence standpoint. Like, I, I want to see, like, what I saw at, in portions of your game against Kentucky where, like, yeah, that window is really mm. tight, but I, I'm a guy. I'm 6'4". I'm 225 pounds. I'm as traitsy as anybody who's ever played it. I'm going to make that throw. I, I want to see him play on the verge of almost risk at times. Like mm -hmm. I felt, I felt through times in, in, in critical games. He didn't have a lot of them last year, right? But when games got tight and windows got tight, I felt a hesitant hesitancy in the confidence range and and how he felt about his own skill set. I want to see a quarterback walk around like he drives a Lambo truck. Like that's what I want to see. I want to see big Drake energy. I want to see like. This dude knows he's a guy. He knows he's going to go out here and ball out. He knows he's a first-round caliber football player. That's where the growth is for me, for Carson. Like, walk out and play football like you know you're good at this. You know you're great at this because he is. Well, I wonder, too, for, from a pro perspective, too, like that's why scouts kind of shy away a little bit from guys that have just played one year because there is yeah. there is a talent. Like, you, you can find talented guys all over the place. The game, and we saw it with Patrick this week. We, we, T. Bob and I debated yesterday, like what makes Patrick now on the level of Tom Brady? It's, it's, it's from the shoulders up. It's, yeah. it's that confidence. It's that swagger. It's that leadership. It's, it's all those things that just don't always come overnight. That take time to develop, and sometimes it doesn't even happen most of the time in, in, in a single season. So you get a more veteran guy, a guy that's been through it, a guy that's been able to gain his confidence over a matter of you know 20 plus at 25, almost 30 games. Like, yeah, that's why you come back for another year. Because if it's straight based on talent, Carson is going to be one of the most talented quarterbacks in this year's draft. He's a top three or four talent quarterback. He would light up the combine, he would yeah. light up the pro day. It's it's all here, man. It's all up top. If he gains that confidence next year, and 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 to me, it's a mixture of confidence. It's also a mixture of, of risk-taking. And I've, I think I've said this before in here, a couple of things. One, because him and I have talked about this, he watched a lot of Aaron Rodgers tape in the offseason. Yeah. And he was always very quick to see a linebacker drop, boom, check down. Mm -hmm. You know, see safeties, get off the hash, boom, check. Like, where, where, where's my – get the ball out now, get the ball out now, which is great. But at some point, you do have to kind of say, like, okay, I've seen it enough. I know yep. if I've seen enough film, I know if I give my guy a tick more second that, that yeah, that check down's there, but let me just give my guy a chance down the field real quick. And if it's not there, then I'll check it down. So I think it's a mixture of working on the timing with the foot, you know, essentially with his footwork as well. Yeah. And, and just, I think with the amount of reps and just playing more games, you start to understand the flow of each individual football game when your football team needs you to really push things. Like, we, mm -hmm. hey, we need to drive this car a lot faster right now. Like, we need to go. Um, I think as you get older and you play more games at the position, like, you have a better feel for these types of deals when they're happening in front of you. Like, hey, 
The other, our defense is having a bad day. We need to go. Or, hey, this is a third and 12. I need to hold this football and make sure, hey, if I have to put the ball at risk, that's fine. We need to extend this possession right now because we need to score. Yeah. Those types of things are things that you pick up more and you feel more comfortable and confident in those situations as you get older. That's just time. Well, he also had a lot of confidence last year when, when healthy, and this was the biggest issue for Georgia last year, which may be a good thing heading into this year because you learn how, not, how to essentially not play – with these guys, uh, yeah, McConkey, Brock, and both of them were in and out of the lineup last year. Rosemary Jack Saint was a really good guy; had a nice touchdown in the in the in the Senior Bowl. He was, I would say, pretty darn consistent, at least the most consistent he's been in his career. But you're losing a lot of those playmakers. Who, in your mind, has to step up? Is it some oh. of the guys in the portal? Is it guys that are already yeah. on the roster? Like George's had issues with elite receiver consistent play consistent Dude, for, for the, almost a decade now look at the roster right now like if you talk about who do they need to step up who do they need to have like like big seasons or what what pieces are they are made available to them like you immediately go to the transfer additions right it's like off rip hey Ra Ra thomas and dominic lovett need to have better seasons and they they need to show growth from year one at georgia to year two at Georgia. Those are both transfers. Hey, what is London Humphreys going to do? Is he going to compete for the Z spot? You know, it's a six foot three, 200 pound freshman All American or all SEC freshman type guy coming in from Vanderbilt. That That's not a homegrown product, right? Hey, mm -hmm. what's Michael Jackson the third going to be from USC? Also, a very different Z type receiver can kind of do it all. Lincoln Riley used him as a, as a yak guy, gave him a lot of jets, gave him a lot of screens, gave him a lot of, hey, go run after the catch. Go run after when we give you the ball. Go make a play with your legs. And you got this Colby Young guy coming in from Miami. He's really like B-Max type of mold. You know this better than anybody, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Brian McClendon has a type. Brian McClendon loves 6'3", 200 plus. We all Look do. at everybody who's ever played for him. But, I mean, extremely him. This is a, a different example. Look at the guys that played for him during his first time at Georgia. Mm -hmm. You're talking about Chris Durham's. You're talking about Massaqua. Before we even get into the A.J. Green discussions, Malcolm Mitchell's, Chris Conley's, all these guys are 6'3 plus. All these dudes were long. All right. This is the type of player that B Mac wants and needs and like wants to develop. Those are five names, Aaron, that are all transfer additions because they don't really have any more homegrown talents. You look at the roster right now and it's like, hey, Dylan Bell is really good. Great job there. Um, is Anthony Evans going to be good? We'll see. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of but him. The, I hear a lot yeah. of excitement about him. I, I do. I hear a lot of great things, but hey, that's two guys. And, yep. and hey, will Tyler Williams develop into something? We're talking about three or four years of of a track record of of recruiting on the on the, on the trail at this position that just has not bared fruit, and they have gone to the portal, and that's fine. And Kirby has always talked about, hey, that's what we're going to use the portal for. We're going to use it as band aid solutions, not core identity mm -hmm. traits. Mm -hmm. But man, like how, how many more times can we go into this and 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 not necessarily I'm not saying they've struck out on any of these guys, but they don't have the Jamison Williams uh Williams like success story. We brought this fourth fourth, you know, number four receiver from Ohio State and made him a first round draft pick. Georgia doesn't have that right now on the track record in the portal. Maybe it develops this year, but that's well, what well, they're banking on at that. Well, I think they're hoping I think the, the problem, Brooks, for the past what four three, four years is this offense has been built around the tight end position. I mean, Correct. look at like, it, it, that, that's what's been built around. It's been around like, okay, 12 personnel, 13 personnel. How do we get Brock matched up? How do we use that chess piece? Uh, even a couple of years ago, it was, it was, you know, not only Brock, but it was the running backs. How do we move like a yeah. guy like James Cook around and get him matched up? Like they were all these unique pieces, which made it really difficult for defenses, but kind of put the importance of the receiver in the background. It was like, okay, guys, we can run the I, football. We can throw it to our tight ends, match up against linebackers and safeties. We can get our running back involved in the pass game. And then we're going to play great defense. We don't need the explosive receiver down the field because that's not who we are as an identity as a football team. And I think now the defense will still be great, correct. but the SEC is going to be better. You have to kind of adapt a little bit more. And I think you have now the quarterback that can be more explosive if he gets what we talked about earlier, some more of that confidence built into him.